There seem to be only two kinds of people in Montana Territory, the good and the bad. Sometimes it's hard to tell which is which. Frontier Gentlemen. Now, starring John Daner, this is the story of J.B. Kendall. Frontier Gentlemen. Benton on the Missouri River when I reached Helena. There I was lucky enough to receive an offer of transportation in a wagon. So I sold my horse and we set out on the Mullen Road. My companion, or bullwhacker as he called himself, was a leathery, stringy chap who might have been 50 or 70. It was hard to tell. His name was George Scales. And he seemed more than happy to have someone to talk to. Yes, sir. I was running the first shot of the California Gold Rush. Went out with my father in '49. Now, how old do you figure I am, boy? Well, fifty-eight. Uh, fifty-eight. Wouldn't think it, would you? Well, well, I... fifty-eight. Never had a sick day in my life. Been married three times, buried two. The third got took by Apache down in Arizona territory. <laughs> I pitied the poor son of a gun Indian was hooked up with her. Boy, she was the meanest piece of calico you ever set eyes on. It was a lucky day for me. You, uh, are you married? No, no. You take no. my advice, boy. Uh, what did you say your name was? Kendall. Kendall. You ain't kin to the Brown County, Texas Kendalls, are you? No. Well, come to think of it, their, their name wasn't Kendall, it was Pridgen. Now, how come you figure I misremembered that? What was we talking about? Well, I, I'm not, not quite sure. Now, now, you take my father. Eighty-six years old, two weeks back. I'm taking him home to bury him. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, anything for sorrow. All got to go up Salt River sometime. Old buzzer's been out in California better than 30 years. There ain't no place for a man to sack his saddle, so last trip out, I said, Paul, I've got to take you back to Kentucky, because when you back the dust, it ain't fit to do it in this here place. That's what I said. Hey, I see. Well, we got us a place in Kentucky. Figure he ought to rest comfortable there. Well, did he die on the way, uh, on the way from California? <laughs> If he did, since you got on back in Helena, oh, the old buzzard ain't dead yet. He's asleep in the wagon. Oh. Eats and sleeps. Ain't much else to do, I guess. <laughs> old buzzard, deep as a post. When he wakes up, you just say hello, smile at him, and he'll think that's just fine, just fine. <laughs> oh, you want a chaw? Uh, no, thank you. You don't talk much, do you? Um, no, I suppose not. What's your measure? I'm a newspaper correspondent. Writer? Yes. Hmm. Newspaper fodder, huh? Yes, that's right. Oh. Had me a run-in with one of your kind back in 62, maybe 63. I was a mule skinner with Major McCleave down in the Apache country. You ever been down there? No. Mean, surely mean country. Ain't cutting for nothing. Hey. Hey. <laughs> hey, the old buzzard woke up. Everything fine, Paul. I'm happy. Oh, you ain't never nothing but, Paul. Got a way to go yet, Paul? Hey, this here's Mr. Kendall. He got on in hell enough. How do you do, Mr. Scales? <laughs> Don't matter what you say, just talk and laugh. Uh, yeah. I uh, understand you're going back to Kentucky. I just, I just said that. Uh, what is he saying? There's no telling. You go on back to sleep, you old buzzard. I'll tell you when it's time to eat. <laughs> He's going to do it. Yes, he didn't like you. Oh. Paul meets a stranger, he'll talk your ear off. Talking to man I ever seen. If he don't take you, he does what I tell him. I just know he'll keep his mouth shut now until you get off in the bed. I'm sorry. Oh, no cause, no cause, Mr. Man can't help what he is. So I just hope you ain't like that cheap killing dog of a newspaper fuller I was telling you about. <laughs> I sure did sharpen my hoe on him. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever he did, I assure you, I'll be very careful not to make the same mistake. Newspaper father. <laughs> At midday, we stopped for our meal. Scale, senior, 
Warren Jr. kept up an extraordinary conversation, during which time I was completely ignored. The pair reminded me a little of Dickensian characters, a certain gentleman and his aged parent. After his food, the aged parent clambered back into the wagon and presumably went back to sleep as we continued on our way. An offering of tobacco mellowed scale somewhat, and I felt that possibly I might be forgiven for my, my sin by association. It was late that afternoon when we saw the three riders. They were halted by the side of the road. If when you know how to use that gun of yours, Kendra, you better be ready to reach. You think they're outlaws? Man's bone seasoned. He don't take chances. Not in these parts. Looks as though one of them is hurt. Well, that's a fact. And, well, I'll be a way belly stump sucker. <laughs> a woman. One's a woman. Look at that. If that don't beat all. Whoa! 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 Hey! Hey, you got trouble? Haven't got any medicines, have you? No, got some whiskey. It's my husband. He's hurt kind of bad. It ain't nothing, I tell you, Doris. Just let me rest a while. We'll get on. You ain't gonna make it, Bill. Shut up. Mister, I'll buy your whiskey. That'll fix me. No such thing. It isn't whiskey you need. Either of you gents know about doctrine? No, ma'am. Well, I know a little, not much. Let him take a look, Bill. Jack, here, come on. Give him a hand, Dad. You know, Kendall, I got a feeling I know that fella. I see him, but I ain't sure where. Why don't you bring the whiskey out, Mr. Scales? He looks as if he can use it. All right. Here, get your jacket off, Easy, Bill. Easy, woman, now take it. Easy. Easy. Oh, man, that sure looks wicked. You better sit down. There's the rock over there. Yeah. Come on. Ah. When did it happen? Three days ago. Did you get the bullet out? No. Yeah, I'm all right, I tell you. Just let me rest. You're not all right. That's gangrene, the shoulder and arm. There's a doctor in Helena. It won't take you more than three hours to get there. We ain't going to Helena, mister. We're going to Fort Benton. But well, that's over a hundred miles. You've already got a fever. If I were you, you I'd... wait me. Oh, Phil, he's right. Now, please, let's go back. No. I think I could remove the bullet, but that won't help. You ain't no doctor. Hey, pour some of this panther juice in your gizzard. Cure everything from the rattles to... No. Ain't gonna cure that. Give me the bottle. Take a good big slug, Bill. Hey, don't I know him someplace? Not likely to, mister. I ain't never forgot a face. I swear I seen his. Mind if I ask your name? I'm blotched for your whiskey. We'll be moving on. Oh, Bill, what good is it going to be? You're sick. You can't ride all that way. I do like he said. Dory, you heard what I said. Come on. Oh, Bill. He fainted. We carried him to the wagon, put him inside. The aged parent woke up, smiled pleasantly at the newcomers, and watched with interest as the wife and the one called Jack did what they could to make the wounded man comfortable. I felt a tug at my sleeve. Scales drew me away from the wagon. I know him. I remember. I know who he is. I'll never forget a man's face. Only difference now, he ain't got that mustache he used to wear. The Powder River Kid, Bill Logan, that's who. Uh Oh, ain't you got no savvy? The Powder River Kid. He's wanted in more territories than even James boys. Well, I've seen the posters. There's $2,000 reward for him, dead or alive. Well, what do you say? Make pretty good sharing, huh? Muy dinero, thousand for you, thousand for me. Of course, his wife and his friend might have something to say about that. Then we shoot him. Sure, shoot him now, and then we take the kid on into Benton and collect. I don't think he'll live that long, not without a doctor. Who's talking about alive? Posters say live or dead. Well, if you think of it, we would be better off if we shot him. Might save a sack for of trouble. I seen him raw once, down in Virginia City it was. He fanned two men down so quick he had his gun back in the holster before they hit the girl. Mister? Yes. Come in. Hey, I thought the fellas getting out of the wagon, too. We going to kill him? No. He's still unconscious. Mister, you said you could take out the bullet. Maybe it'd do some good. There's too much poison. He's got one chance, and that's to take him back to Helena. Is this your wagon, Mr. Kendall? No, ma'am, it's mine, George Scales. Mr. Scales, I'll pay you $200 if you'll turn around. Take us back to Helena. 
Well, now, that's a mighty attractive offer. I don't know, Dory. Bill said... I don't care what he said. Right now, he's dying. No, I ain't. Mister, my wife offers you 200 to take me back to Helena. You let me rest a while in your wagon till I'm fit to ride the other way. I'll make it 300. That's fair. Yes, sir, that's a fair deal. <laughs> I'll do that. Make yourself to home. The old buzzard's my paw. If he talks at you too much, just better good and loud. Go to sleep, you old buzzard. You ride in here with me, Dory. Jack, stay on your horse. Sure, Bill. Just take it easy. All right, boys. Let's bounce. <laughs> I did a camp pretty soon. <laughs> Bet the Powder River kids think so. This trail ain't the softest. Hey, how long you figure till he hangs up his axe? I don't know. But I wouldn't worry about it. I ain't worrying. I've been doing some thinking. How come you suppose he don't want to go back to Helena? Somebody's after him, I imagine. That's my guess. If somebody's a U.S. Marshal and that Marshal finds him before the kid dies... You figure maybe we'll have to cut another share on the reward? A fine legal point. Well, I ain't gonna worry. Dark coming on. Hey, the lights are looking clearing up the road. Yeah, I gotta feed the old buzzard. Hey, 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 hey! After the supper, I walked away from the camp to a rise overlooking the Missouri. There were flashes of lightning in the east, and you could see the outline of heavy black clouds. But there hadn't been any rain yet. I stood for about ten minutes, smoking my pipe. Then I heard steps behind me. Scale said you come up this way. How's your husband? Oh, I think the fever's worse. Will he make it? I'm not a doctor. You don't have to be. You should have gone back to Helena. He couldn't. He was afraid to. Scales knows who he is, doesn't he? You know. Yes. There's been a marshal trailing us for six months. He caught up with Bill and Helena. My brother Jack helped him get away, and we hid out in town for three days. Mm. Well, why didn't you get a doctor? Oh, he wouldn't let us. There's a reward. Bill was afraid a doctor would try and collect. Just like your friend wants to... <laughs> He is pretty obvious, isn't he? Oh, man's luck runs out. Coyotes started snapping for the leavings. Me and Bill was on our way to Benton before the marshal caught up with him. We figured on going back east. Were you and your brother both working with Logan? No. And Bill hasn't done anything wrong since we was married. Mr. Kendall, I'll tell you a straight thing. I haven't been but a man like you'd call a decent woman. Most of my life, I, I've been a wild one. But not since Bill. I wish I could help Mrs. Logan. I... I really come to ask you to... I... I saw it done once before with a man's leg that got like Bill's arm. They cut it off. Yes, I thought of that. It's too late. The poison's in his shoulder. It wouldn't do any good. I'm sorry. A, a preacher out in Utah married us. He'd never heard of the Powder River Kid. He thought we was nice folks. Well, I... I better get back to the camp. I went with her. Jack was with Logan in the wagon. Scales' father was sitting on his haunches by the campfire, sucking on a piece of root candy and quittling a sliver of wood. He rocked back and forth, humming to himself. Scales leaned against a tree, ruminating on a piece of tobacco. He beckoned to me. What'd she want? She wanted me to cut off his arm. That's a woman for you. You aim to do it? No. Wouldn't do any good. 
probably kill him. You sure wouldn't think he was a gunslinger, would you? Not now, you wouldn't. <laughs> Sick and whimpering like a dying pup. Do you think we could go on tonight? Not on this trail. With the rains coming, no, sir. Try the old buzzer don't like traveling in the dark. He don't keep that up all night. None of us will get any shut eye. Anything I can do, Jack? No. He's sick to the head right now. Don't even know Dory. Honey, don't. Dory says you know about us. We figured so. I think you're all right, Kendall. My sister does, too. But I want to tell you not to start thinking about that reward. A few minutes later, it began to rain and continued intermittently all through the night. But the dawn was clear and bright. It took the combined efforts of oxen, horses, and men to take the wagon back onto the trail. The wheels had sunk nearly hub-deep in mud. But as the sun rose, we were on our way northward again. Bill Logan was no longer delirious, but in the grayness of his face, I knew that he didn't have long to live. It was during the early afternoon that his wife called out to me. Mr. Kendall? Yes? Will you come back a minute? All right. Maybe he's dead, huh? Maybe. <laughs> he wants to talk to you. Sorry, go on up with that bull whack. What I got to say is private. Make him stay quiet. Come on over closer, will you? There's the old man asleep. Uh, yes. Now listen, I'm finished. I ain't a doctor, nothing gonna help me now. I'm feeling it. Now, I never asked a favor. No man in my life, I'm asking one now. What is it? There's a reward for me. It ain't much, only 2000 but it means something for Dory. I ain't gonna pay no reward for a man that's died natural like. Or if they do like us, not go to that Marshall fellow for starting me off. I want you to fix it so Dory can get it. Well, how? He fill me full of lead. Shoot you? Yeah, shoot me. No. I trust you. You see, I, I trust you to give the money to Dory. No, you're out of your head. No, 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 mister. I ain't last night, but not now. It's the best I can do for her. She's a good woman. Now, let me give her something so she don't have to go back to what she was. I can't kill you. You got a right to. Look, I'm wanted, Kendall. I've done more killings than I can remember. It ain't a wrong thing for you to do. You could say I was trying to escape. No, I can't. That's not drawn. It doesn't make any difference. We both know you wouldn't shoot. I'm sorry. I don't think he felt very much pain after that. He just drank Scales whiskey and talked quietly to his wife. He died just before the sun went down. Well, I guess he's dead now. I think so. You figure she want to take him into Benton or bury him out here? I don't know. Sure does seem a shame and a sin to see that reward go up in smoke. Perhaps it doesn't have to. How do you mean? How come? I could ride back to Helena. Wouldn't take more than a few hours. What good did that do? Well, I'd take him back with me. Well... All you have to do is to see that they don't try to stop me. Listen, boy, for a thousand dollars, nobody's going to stop you. The old buzzard's still spry enough to hold a gun. I just have to tell him who to point it at, is all. Hey, uh, how do I know you come back? Well, I imagine you'll just have to take my word for it. Ooh. Ain't never trusted a newspaper fuller yet, but I guess there ain't no choice. I give you my word of honor. I'll come back. All right. Oh, courage in there, too. Why, well, ain't going to be nothing to it. All right, Curry, you keep your hands high. 
Both of you get over to the other side of the wagon. The Potter River kid's going back to hell or not. Scales shouted instructions to his father, who disarmed the dead man and Curry, then held a gun steady, a smile on his old face, head nodding approvingly. I took Logan's body out of the wagon and tied it onto a horse. Just before I rode away, I saw Mrs. Logan watching me, crying, a soundless, terrible cry. I must have traveled ten miles in the night before I found the courage to... to do what I had to do. I led the horses off the road, tethered them, and took down Logan's body. He looked peaceful. Forgive me, Logan. I delivered the body to the marshal in Helena and collected $2,000 reward for the capture and killing of Bill Logan, alias the Powder River Kid. Then I took the horses and rode back to where I'd left the wagon. Did you get it, boy? Did you get the money? I got it. One of these days, I'm going to catch up with you, mister. Get on your horse. You too, Mrs. Logan. Go on. One of these days. Afraid not, Mr. Scales. I've got some bad news for you. You are getting nothing. What? Exactly. Drop your gun or the old buzzard's going to lose his son. Oh. I might have known. Just like the other one. A stinking, no good, low down Goodbye, paper files. It's been a most unpleasant association. <laughs> Mrs. Logan and her brother, a little further along the Mullen Road. I gave her the $2,000, and together we rode on into Fort Benton, Montana Territory. Frontier Gentlemen was written, produced, and directed by Anthony Ellis and stars John Daner as J.B. Kendall. Featured in the cast were Joe Kearns, Paula Winslow, Larry Dobkin, Barney Phillips, and Robert Rudier. Music was composed and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. Frontier Gentlemen has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. 